talk about many things and uh, much more things uh, and i am so pleased uh, morning session is going not as well as the evening session uh, because of morning no many people join group but uh, evening session i uh, i'm so happy to join that group and uh, i always try to join all the two groups all morning and evening session uh, uh evening session sir uh, uh, i only one day one day i can received the uh, nri lectures uh, their thinking their their thoughts uh, but uh, here two days uh no one uh, uh, join the session and our our and our right yes very good morning yes, all of you ji sir Hmm. Actually, you know very well. Some of person is unable to wake up early in the morning. And actually, yeah, morning season is best according to me. If you uh, in morning time, then you have to speak and then you have practice. Then definitely you can improve. Uh, morning is best way to improve your your speaking skills and all things. Uh, like. Uh, मंत उच्चारण या अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो देन योर माइंड इज ऑलवेज अराउंड रिगार्डिंग द प्रैक्टिस एंड ऑल थिंग्स एंड इवनिंग सेशन यू कैन से मेनी ऑफ पर्सन ज्वाइन द इवनिंग सेशन ड्यू टू ही इज नॉट स्लीप ऑन टाइम एंड ही इज अवेलेबल मेनी ऑफ पर्सन ज्वाइन द इवनिंग सेशन ड्यू टू हिज फिनिश ऑफिस after a class yeah um, after work then he is join the evening session but both are good if you interested then you have the two option then you can have level on morning or evening then you can join the same <laughs> yes sir but in our classes all classes is going on in morning way in every time yeah aryan is also here you can talk with aryan pvx sir you can talk with aryan you can put some questions also you are a teacher then he is only fourth grade right now he become a fifth of uh, on words of april Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Aryan. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. I listen about you that you are. uh very eager to know about the space yes so i have a question for you yes that uh, uh are you know about ozone layer yes what is the role of ozone layer It it protect the protect us from the harmful radiation of the sun called UV rays. 
Uh, it's very, very good, very good. Uh, do you tell me something about your school? Yeah. Uh, my what school is the name of? Um, Secret Art Senior Secondary School. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I have a, another question for you that uh, uh, solar, uh, what is solar system? Solar system is a family of planets and other heavenly bodies. Yes, yes, yes. yes. How many planets are there in our solar system? Mm -hmm. Eight. You can say that there are eight planets in a solar system. You can also uh, speak about the draft planet also. Na? He is also yeah. included in our previous time. Awesome. Yeah? Mm. Uh. Which, is, which planet is the nearest planet of the Earth? Venus. Yeah? Venus. Venus. Okay. Very good. Uh, if you want to question for me. Question? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, if you uh, are you want to uh, uh, any question for me? Okay. Um, kinematic time dilation. Yeah. Kinematic time dilation. It's very good question, but uh, I uh, don't understand what you are saying. Uh, um, it is a way of to travel in future, like. If you are in a spaceship which is going very fast, um, the time in the spaceship will be slow than the people that are in the Earth. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. It's called a time dialysis. What is it? Is, what time is it called? Time dialysis. Okay, okay. I got it. And the second thing you ask, what what you ask, second thing? What? Aryan, beta, speak. Acha the karo na phone samne rakho na hath me kyun ghuma rahe ho usko. Yes. You can speak properly, na? <coughs> yeah. Aryan. Yes. Actually, my English is speaking not very well. I like you, uh, but uh, you can, sir. If uh, you don't I, mind, you can put the answer in the English also. You can ask the question in Hindi also. Not you are not able to speak in English, but he, but yes, you yes, definitely you can. You you become a very good speaker also. Then you have practice and practice. Then definitely you can speak. You can put the questions in yes, Hindi yes. way also. He is also understand Hindi. He English ka batta nahi hai Hindi. <laughs> yes, yes, but he is curious, sir. He is curious. Very good. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning, sir. पता नहीं पंकज सर आपका वॉइस ऑडिबल नहीं है यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल प्रॉपर्ली योर वॉइस इज टू लो सेल्फ ऑन
Vitharian, Vitharian, because he is knowing very well <laughs> about science. हेलो यस पंकज जी Yes, Surendra sir. So, so Vivek ji also very interested, Surendra sir. Vivek ji join our both session. It's a good for practice. I think after a few days, Vivek ji will. Yeah. Yes. Actually, uh, one person joined the Mr. Sumit. He is my known sir. Yes, I started joining sometimes, Navin ji. and i think due to new i like prachi <laughs> they also left no, no, i'm just yeah. just discuss with them then he is uh, he is joined both time okay. but actually villages areas many a person not is interested to speak very well and not he is not interested to study in english na that's why all are in hindi student नमस्ते सर नमस्कार सर नमस्ते सर हेलो हाउ आर यू ऑल यस सर आई एम फाइन सर गुड टू सी यू ऑल थैंक यू सर या आई जस्ट डिसाइडेड टू ड्रॉप इन एंड सी हाउ यू ऑल आर डूइंग थैंक यू थैंक यू सर या आई सी देयर आर क्वाइट ए a uh, little bit yeah. uh, more movement in the yes, group one one interested uh, people means uh, navin kumar son aryan is also present sir he is a yes, standard sir. fourth <laughs> you can okay. call him he is also very okay. excited to very nice okay yes. good so, so what is so the aryan aryan what is the topic today? i think yes aryan you first time join with our nat sir so please say something about yourself yes uh my name is aryan kumar my father name is navin kumar uh, i am from bihar but i am living in diana for my education purpose i am 9 years old my school name is secret art senior secondary school i study in Fourth grade. Thank you. And what about the hobby? Introduction. Mm. What is your plan for future when you grow up? I want to become. I want to become a astrophysicist in future. Wow, astrophysicist! That's very nice. I think uh, we discussed it last time. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. so uh, that's a very good field that's very good for science maybe you will discover new things uh new planets maybe you can solve some problems you know we have you have a biggest threat threat from space you know that you know what is it the space is you know it is explosion is happening all the time and there is a strong possibility that sometimes a big piece of space junk can accidentally uh, come into our gravitation uh, earth's gravitation and you know bombard our earth and that can wipe out the whole whole uh, life system we have on our our planet it ha it has happened in the past uh, to a certain extent so that's why scientists are trying to figure out they are watching the space and uh, 
trying to figure out all those possible uh, situations. How can we prevent them? Maybe you can help in that field one day. We never know. Good. So, Spender, sir, you want to say something or? Spender, sir. Hello. Surinder, sir. Yes, Navinji, you have any question or you want to say something with mm -hmm. Amanath, sir? No, no, sir. Uh, Amarna, sir, if you have uh, any question to Aryan, you can discuss with them. Actually, Aryan is my son, sir. He's, uh, <laughs> he's yeah. uh, around now. No, very, very um, nice. You are giving him good education uh, and uh, he will do very well. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, we'll be talking to him as he grows up. So anytime, uh, if he has any question, if I can help, you guys can reach me through this meeting. Yeah, yes. So what happened to Surenderji? He's, uh, he's uh, uh, I think uh, he's still there, right? Yes, yes. So uh, morning, as, as we had discussed, I had, I had posted a lot of things uh, about the American admission process, American university admission process on that uh, Mithla mentoring website, and our Mithla mentoring website. Yeah. So those of you who are interested or sending your kids or your friends how to come to America, go and visit that. Uh, all the information, in fact, I have given the list of almost uh, all the 150 universities there where one can come in any field, science, arts, you know, uh, if you come from the science, technology, math, and engineering, which is in short call in this country, STEM. So that is the uh, one name for science, technology, math, and engineering. Almost certain that uh, you can get a scholarship. If you come for PhD, 100% almost sure. If you come for master's, you have to spend a semester uh, uh, you have to support yourself in the first semester and normally they give you in the second semester some financial aid. So um, if you think generally initial investment is there, but ultimately you don't spend any money from your pocket. You get it back after two. If you look at the two years expense and uh, what income you get as a student from the university, basically it is uh, uh, you get every penny or every every paisa back from the um, uh, which you have I spent. Mean, please, your please mute. Huh? Some so, sound is coming from Navindi. Yes. Maybe you can put it on the mute right now, Navindi. Yeah, when you are ready to talk, then only open. I think that's what we all have to do. Uh, okay. So, so those of you, because uh, uh, our side, it is people have no information and they are scared. They think that, oh, it's very expensive. It is not. You can, uh, in the South and the West, almost, uh, you know, uh, they come like uh, almost every family, they send their kids for masters because they know that it is a very good investment, much better than the stock market or even the marriage market. Because, you know, uh, yes, yes, yes. whatever, whatever you spend, I mean, I see, I see even the girls are coming like in, in hundreds from the south. There, I was living in a town and there was a uh, college, their marriage college in Poughkeepsie. Uh, it has a master's program. So in like, uh, it is a mainly IBM town in the New York state where I used to live in 80s and 90s. And so uh, a few years back, I was visiting that town and then uh, 
in a, in a picnic spot, I saw a lot of Indian girls. So I stopped by and said, where are you guys studying? They said that we are at the Marist College, which is a small private college. And, uh, and uh, the girls, I asked about that college because I had taught a course that in that college long time back. Uh, and uh, so I was inquiring about how are things. And I knew that head of the Department of Computer Science was a Sharmaji from Patna there. So uh, I was just inquiring about him and other thing. And then I asked that, hey, uh, so in the master's program you are doing there, are there a lot of Indian students there? See, they told me there were four or five girls that uh, uh, not few in the whole class of the, in the, all the master's program, almost everybody is from India. And 50% uh, or more are the girls uh, uh, in the program. So I said, how come this is? She said that, well, you know, we, when we are, we are in the undergraduate uh, in India, there are a lot of consulting firms. They come and they, they almost uh, recruit us from their different colleges. And then once network has developed, then automatically there is chain reaction and one after another batch you get more input, more people are coming. And then, so whole infrastructure from mm -hmm. South, especially from Telugu speaking area had developed. And then the parents, they know that, well, initially it is going to cost us money even for the two years, uh, because that is a private school. So uh, they, they don't give that much of uh, financial assistance to students. So they have to, uh, uh, pay their free and then living expenses. But they know that after two years, they will get a job in America and uh, that will serve two purpose. They can repay back the family, whatever money they have spent on education. And then they will have a good job, good career. And then they can later on help the sibling and the family. And thirdly, they can easily get married with a uh, Indian kid in America and have a good life. So they considered it a ticket to heaven <laughs> in Indian parents in Telugu area. So, I mean, so they are way ahead. We are here scared to send our boys first to this country. But in the South India, people have gone that far that they don't hesitate to send their girls, daughters, sisters, and uh, they are getting education. And uh, they pretty much like 70, 80% of them, they stay here or uh, those who return back, uh, they go with a good education and then make a difference in their own life. So, and then nowadays there is no distance. I mean, you know, like uh, I, I can take a plane here uh, from, uh, uh, from New York, that is another city in New, New Jersey, which is closest uh, uh, airport to me. Uh, and uh, if I take a flight from there, a direct flight from here, almost that is every day, I can go to Delhi in 16 hours and then take another two hours flight, right, from there to Darvanga. So in 18 hours, I'll be in Darvanga. So distance wise and telephone is almost free now, thanks to WhatsApp, you know. So. So what is the difference? I mean, it doesn't really matter nowadays whether you live in uh, one city or another city. It's uh, uh, world has become too small. You can be anywhere in the world and still you can be connected with your family. So that, that part that, oh my gosh, my son, my daughter, my family is going to be far away from us is uh, not anymore true. There is constant interaction with the family we always have with everybody in our family. And, uh, and so I, it's, uh, it's not like 80s and 90s. I know in the 80s, I used to write letter every few uh, weeks to my parents. And then telephone was very expensive. And um, uh, we used to call maybe once in a few months, each other. And, uh, but, but now, <laughs> It's, uh, it's like, you know, whenever you feel like, pick up a phone and talk to anybody you like. So um, it's, a, it's a good thing. And uh, I encourage life is nothing but full of experience. You have to experience life. So keep doing it.
So. All right. What else? What else is new? So, Prem. Yes, I'm an answer. Yeah, go ahead, Prem. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay, sir. Thank you so much for asking me. Very good morning, sir. Yeah, you guys are dedicated. I see you guys uh, uh, doing now twice, so that's very good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank, thank you so much, sir. So, sir once uh, in I the have, morning uh, and once in the evening. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Sir, we are trying to fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah, we need uh, more volunteers on both sides. So one yes. will, uh, yes. uh, uh, from outside also. And um, I think I have sent you, uh, uh, Pankaj, a few more uh, contact one to contact them. Like, uh, I know uh, Thakurji is in India, so I sent you his phone number. Contact him in the daytime. Uh -huh. Uh, yes, 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 and see if he can join and sir, explain actually, to him. Sir, yeah. actually, my village is Motihari, so I have a, not hundred percent methyl language. You understand, sir? No, no. Yes, talk to him in Hindi. Just or talk yes, to sir. him in uh, Motihari. I mean, yes, you know, yes, Motihari language. I know Motihari language. I was married in Motihari, so my wife is speaking yes. that language of that area. Uh, yes. Which is which is which is uh, uh, which is fine. So, uh, oh, and um, or you speak in Hindi and tell him that this is what you are doing. It Hindi, he's comfortable with Hindi, so it's not a problem. Uh, 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 and uh, and then also same thing with Parmeshwar Jha. I gave you his number. He's in Madhubani, uh, and. Um, he is also a great scholar of economics as well as uh, used to be professor. And then he was very strong supporter of Mintla paintings. And, uh, you know, he came, I think he is some of the early person who came to this country. People started coming in 60s here. I know only two, three people, a couple of people who came in 60s, like uh, Dr. Mahesh. Uh, 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 he is the only one I know who came in 60s. This uh, Parmeshwar Jha, he came in 70s. And in uh, 70s, quite a few people came. And then 80s was my generation. A lot of people came in 80s. And then 90s, people have been coming in large numbers after that. But still, we are not a good match to... Uh, people like Gujarati or uh, Punjabi or let's call it uh, Marathi South. or South, South Indians. Yes. Yeah. So we need to some work regarding. Yeah. We we yeah. you know it all happens in the chain reaction. You know when yeah. the, when you see the uh, connection one connection um, from your friend circle goes then that gives confidence to uh, go, you know, to another friend. So, so we need to uh, create that chain reaction, right? We have to create interest. I mean, like, for example, you know, uh, Mujafarpur Engineering College, uh, let's try to connect that uh, college students with us, ask them to join, to write them letters that, hey, you guys should join meeting. And then uh, uh, that is the Tirhutia University only. Uh, and maybe students, uh, you know, they are they are there, um, in engineering students, we can guide them. Or similarly, like there are Mujafarpur, there is an MBA program, we can guide them. Or, I mean, from any other places, they can join. So we need to make it a little bit more uh, organized. We have to reach to a lot of people. Right now, I see you limited only seven or eight people <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This so, is really challenging, challenging work for me, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's uh, that's very small group. Uh, if this is this is like uh, this is called Hindu growth rate. <laughs> you know, yes, a, yes. Hindu growth rate was very famous in early 50s, 60s, 70s because this. Uh, India was growing very slowly, like two, three percent, which is barely, barely a growth. Two, three percent is not really a growth, as you know, in economics, that is inflation each is even higher than that. So 
how can you call it a growth? But that's what we had uh, in the in the Congress rule. So uh, that was famously known as a Hindu growth rate of uh, uh, India. So, Prem, you have any question? Then ask to Amanath sir. Yes, yes, I have various questions. Oh, go for it then. I'm looking for th uh, those two. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So, sir, uh, yesterday I have, uh, you know, uh, seen one news about uh, UK work visa, right? Okay. So, so there were one article where uh, clearly mentioned that if you want to really go uh, to, you know, UK, right? So, need to have uh, some, some dollar in your account first. To survive in this country, yeah, and uh, and after that, uh, only two only two thousand four hundred people can uh, you know apply for that because this is kind of lottery system is going on. Okay. So, okay. So, so, so what, I mean, mean, I don't know much about. Uh, going to work? Yeah, but uh, but what I'm saying is that uh, you know if there is a lottery system, you should certainly apply because. Everybody has equal chance. You don't know if you will be selected or not, and there is no harm if you don't get selected. If you get selected, you are lucky man. So you should definitely try if they are giving lottery. But uh, I thought that Sarat explained that besides the lottery, you can also go there uh, as uh, uh, as uh, different uh, uh, work visas like. Uh, you know, uh, he he explained, uh, and then of course there is a student visa. Uh, so uh, I think uh, um, I I personally think that there is no harm in applying. Um, uh, so far as the dollar is concerned, uh, you guys uh, uh, you guys can start collecting some dollar, like you know, you. Um, Rather than saving the money in rupees, those of you who are interested, when you meet somebody or like in, even in, in every city, Delhi, you can, there are places in Kannad place you can convert because bank will not directly give you the dollar. But in the, in the black market, it's not very expensive. It's almost the same rate, few rupees more. You will say if it is 80 rupees transaction right now for a dollar, maybe you'll get it for 90 rupees. A dollar, and then, but uh, uh, it's safe, and uh, basically, whatever is the inflation rate, uh, that will give you the value, even if you convert that uh, rupees into dollar. So you you will not be a loser in the long run if you don't if you don't come. You you have your uh, money intact. Consider it uh, like a CD account. So. Uh, you can start collecting money and then, uh, yes, because anywhere you go, initially you will need some money uh, wherever you go. So that's a good strategy to start collecting some money and and then you never know opportunities like this. Uh, if it comes, uh, take it. Um, other thing is that um, um, you can also, I don't know how much uh, uh, how much you can do like uh, you first you do the homework say if you decide to go to university explore everything there and then then just uh, if you don't get admission uh, right away but uh, uh, maybe just go on on the tourist visa a little bit if you have some friends or somebody who can who who, who you can stay with for a few few days or a week, something like that. And uh, so, and then go to the university. I mean, that's another way. A lot of people, when they don't get the visa, want, somehow they come to the country first and then they try to get admission, which is easier. So, and, but the best thing I consider is that from the, for the long-term planning, any country you go, either UK or Canada or USA, the best way is to come on a student visa or find a girl okay. to get married. These are the two best ways. <laughs> okay, married. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah find find a girl in usa and marry her that is one way or second one is to come as a student and uh, then settle down um, and and while you guys are young i mean what is there uh, you have time on your side there is nothing to lose right uh, Okay, what else? What else questions you had? And my second question is very base, you know, very simple. What is time now in the UK? Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, the difference uh, in the time from, uh, from here to London, from New Jersey where I am is about six hours. But you can just check on the phone. Just uh, somebody should be able to, what is time in London? Just do the Google search. It will tell you. So normally I think it is six hours difference between India and uh, London, somewhere in that time frame. So because, you know, as you go west, your, uh, your, uh, your uh, I mean, the time is coming later in those countries, right? So... U.S. India to U.S. is about eleven hours or eleven and a half hours, something like that. Huh. Okay, okay. And uh, and and uh, next thing, Amarna sir, uh, the the difference between uh, you know you know is there any various difference between uh, U.K., London, U.S.A., European, you know, country? Or, uh, uh, you know, Finland also is going on, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, are, they are all different countries. They all have different geography. They all have different uh, culture. They have different level of economy. So uh, there is a difference. There is a temperature difference also. But if you have a long-term plan, from the long-term long -term perspective, United States is still number one because it is the world number one economy. So like I said, and you have all kinds of weather in, in this country. Which country is the USA, right? USA, yeah, you can, okay. there are areas which, have, which is hot, summer, like India, like Rajasthan, you have all kinds of country, uh, country here, I mean, just here. So you, you can move around from one coast to another coast and you can experience different kinds of weather and the ones, uh, uh, I mean, you know, you can choose where to live in the long run when you settle down. But country like England is cold country. You cannot change. There is no hot space there. So uh, same thing with Canada. That's also cold place. Uh, but uh, economy wise, I would say that uh, uh, United States and Canada are the top two destination right now because they have better economy than United Kingdom. Uh, and then uh, also, uh, or what else? Oh, also that opportunity wise, uh, there are more opportunities I would say on this side because it's more industrialized uh, than London now. London has now old economy. Uh, whereas in these countries you have modern economies and uh, still developing right i mean you know how many how many new things get invented in uk in the last 100 years everything happens in usa which changes the world right uh, so uh, that is the difference between the leading country and so if you want to immigrate why you would like to go to a uh, country uh, somewhere which is slightly better than India, but not the best. Go to go for the best country. That would be my recommendation. And it's easy. It's not different. Like I said, that every year almost like 30, 40,000 students are coming in this country from whole India. Can you believe that? 30, 40,000 I'm talking, not like 30, 40. Oh my God, really? Yes, and uh, like uh, IIT alone, all the IITs, almost 50% of the students are here every year. Like in the May, they finish the undergraduate and by July, August, they are 
here in the master's program. 50% students of IITs are there. And within next five years, almost 80% of the, each batch are in the United States. It's, uh, that's what is happening right now. Many of them, they go back to after a few years of, but everybody wants while they are young, the trend is that they come, they spend a few years, and then, you know, they finish PhD, then work for a few more years in this uh, one. I knew I had a, a young uh, professional. He was, uh, he was Malik from Samastipur, but settled in Bombay. His father was in Bombay. Uh, he, he, as a student, he was in IIT Bombay. He graduated long time back, and then uh, he came, he did his PhD, and then uh, he started working for Intel, and that's how I met him. I was working for Intel, and he was, he came also to work for Intel, and then we met. And then he worked for Intel for five years, six years, and then uh, he... Uh, he's, he was the only son of his parents. He has a couple of sisters, but son wise, and he has a lot of pressure. And he, he just said that, uh, I, 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 I also feel like going back, so I'm going to go. So he went back and he went back to teach in IIT Bombay in the material science department. That's where he's teaching electronics material right now. So, I mean, I'm just giving an example. So people just uh, uh, go back. Some people go back and then come back too. That is also, there are also several examples. The, the, everybody has, uh, initially they just uh, uh, want to spend a few years here and then go back. Uh, that is what is almost like 50% have that kind of dream, but only few really go back out of those who dream. Only few get that kind of, uh, convert that into, into real, uh, goal, and and those who go back, um, if they don't like it, they they come back. They keep uh, option open that uh, you know like uh, 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 green card and citizenship. So they have a, they have certain time period within that they can come back. So if they don't like it uh, in India because uh, lifestyle is different there, uh, so then they come back. So uh, uh, all kind of examples are there. Okay. And sir, yeah. uh, I have also seen one article in uh, news also. I have been uh, you know, reading news sometime, right? So I have, I have seen uh, various articles. Uh, uh, and uh, apart from that, I have also seen various videos also where person, person is in, you know, kind of encouragement for Indian uh, people to come or uh, come in country like uh, Finland uh, and uh, a different country, Germany also kind of thing because he's saying in videos also because in Germany there are various uh, labor shops so you should apply, yeah. uh, their portal uh, accommodation is also free. So various things is free for Germany, Finland, uh, Netherlands also. So, so is, is, it the, is it the country you should plan for that? Or how it is? Not every yeah, it depends. Like for example, some people they don't want to uh, go back to school anymore. They just want to experience or you know work. So right away. So then go to a country like this. Germany is one of the industrialized in whole Europe. Uh, uh, Germany is the industrial leader. So in, Indian people can easily get their technical job. You know, in the in the different fields. Uh, and uh, so uh, I would say that Germany is the best and, uh, you know, you learn the language wherever you go. In a short period of time, you can learn the language. It's not difficult to learn. And the um, and, uh, same thing with the Finland, because all Indo-European languages, they are, uh, all the European languages, they are just like uh, our our language, Sanskrit language. They have uh, pretty much similar grammar structure. It's easy, especially Germany has that. So it's easy to learn. I mean, you know, there is no like uh, one size fit to all, right? Everybody has different objective in life. Everybody had different goal, all that. So 
why not we should be encouraging people to go to different countries whatever is uh, uh, meeting their requirement and their goal ob- goals and objective so germany yes i mean germany has sorted a uh, lot of people uh, uh, could have uh, gone if nehru was uh, really smart uh, in the in the in the uh, after second world war uh, when the germany germany was building up uh they were looking for people and they wanted indians to come but somehow uh, nehru didn't uh, uh pay attention to that detail and then turkey uh, came forward and so now turkish population in germany is very significant now like almost like 10% or something like that uh, uh so this this is what happens when you miss the boat you uh, you fall behind otherwise uh, right, right yeah if uh, if imagine if we had gone in uh, in 50s to uh, Ger- started going to germany we could have been uh, much better similarly uh, now we learned and uh, we we migrated very uh, very efficiently we are doing that uh, continuing it in united states we are doing very well right uh, when you know uh, we have uh, pretty much a significant number political clout is now growing and uh, financially we all are doing very well in this country so and uh, the more uh, more you have presence in different country better it is uh, so so i always encourage that you have option for all these countries uh and uh, try uh first is that uh, you know try your easiest path right whatever is the shortest route you can think of to going to the foreign country maybe you go there first see how it is if you like it fine if not if you are not satisfied try another one okay okay but but in my mind something uh, is going on if if uh, you know person is uh, not up from our background our culture our type so going there directly how we can survive uh, you know to whom i should uh, you know uh, request for the for my help so <laughs> this kind of thing will going on you well know, the applying, first thing is applying that... is very easy yeah no 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 the first thing is that uh, you know if you get a, a say job in germany i mean like you said that they give you accommodation all that and uh, basic your basic problem is solved they will give you a job they will give you accommodation and then you start practicing online how to learn basic german uh, uh, and also buy the books on uh, translation and everything is google translation is there for you to help it's not like in good old days now there are technology available to help you and then right, it's right. not that uh, there are a bunch of indians any country you go germany there are a bunch of indians everywhere you find people you can find your some mithila network people are also there so <laughs> okay. no yes yes sir yeah so so just like uh, you know the, there was saying jab tak samosa mein aloo rahega bihar mein lalu rahega same way now my tills have been waking up so now they have started getting out of mithila all around all over the world so i mean you know and then indians and uh, they help so if you ask for help they will find you will find there are mandir there there are universities there uh, there are uh, you know the best universities who teach sanskrit outside india are in germany so you have to do research germany is one of the best country to live also uh, no doubt about it uh, it's very uh, developed country in europe um, and uh, they have uh, they have they have i mean it's not easy to be the leader twice they have been the world war leader uh, that tells you that you know how hard working they are they're very hard working people they give value to time one thing for germany is that you cannot be late for the meeting they don't like it at all they are very punctual okay right yeah so that that is their um, strength that they give so much value to time 
so, so yeah Jibuti. explore it keep exploring mm. i mean you know you should have like uh, when you are uh, explore different things in different country you should always have open option right now and see keep working on two three different uh, project of different types like you said that hey if there is a lottery system in for london apply it you never know if you get get if you don't get don't get it similarly you try for the finland process well you you know if you have to spend a little money that's okay same thing for germany well, you know same thing for here usa try a couple of universities for admission and see what happens so it's okay and then once you kind of more get focused maybe you drop a couple of the ideas and focus on the two and then later on maybe only one will be left which is your final uh destination okay so sir vibhuti also presents vibhuti you have any question then ask with amanath sir vibhuti Devuti, you are audible. Please, please unmute. Hello. Okay, Prem, go ahead. Yes, Pangas sir. So I have found various article for you also. Various opportunities there. if not usa not uk not uh, you know uh, different okay. country so you, you should go for that finland netherland european country where because uh, you know i have seen kind of uh, government government is also uh, ready with portal where people should apply for that country itself for any, yeah. for the job or a, for for education anything anything and then uh, you know in all these countries Uh, people know english if they don't uh, in europe there is one thing that they are they don't like to speak english even though they know the reason is because there are small small countries and they all, they start speaking english then their language they feel like uh, you know uh, will uh, gradually disappear or uh, so french and german are very notorious for that matter they they know english but they would not uh, speak but uh, suppose uh, if you ask them they will be they know that uh, you are coming from outside they will, they will answer your questions and so, second thing is sir yeah god sir our a lot of interested people live, living in germany so i think right now we are learning only english language but uh, we hope in future we will try to also i like french and german language also through this platform it will also yeah i mean you know there are, yes. there are like i nowadays i mean you know it all depends on how much interest you have in learning what There's so much i i am discovering like i'm trying to learn sanskrit and now i'm discovering that you youtube is the biggest university itself <laughs> 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 you, you don't need to go to any place you just find time and organize your study on the youtube uh i mean there is so much information you can learn any language from all kind of level you know you you go and say that you want to learn french or german you can start from abc of that language and you can do the phd level work it is all there so it's i mean not only for this nowadays like it's so much material science engineering there is not a single course uh, i have done in my engineering career which i don't see on the youtube and now on top of that all the iits and everybody else they have started uh, you know putting their courses so uh, i mean now in, there is no uh, shortage of information uh, how much time you want to devote that's all it is how much desire you have you can you can start uh, youtube that is the very first thing and then keep expanding it youtube google these are the two your best friends for learning any skill you want to learn and then 
then you start contacting people like this one and go from there. I talking about international language, I know only a few words, so I'll tell you. Uh, I learned from the German lady when I was working for IBM, Guten Morgen and Guten Abend. This is good morning and good evening. Guten Morgen and Guten Abend. Okay, so that, that's all I learned from a, a German lady. From a French lady, I learned bonjour. Bonjour means uh, uh, it's just like namaste. Bonjour, they use it uh, uh, for everything, just like namaste. We use it for goodbye as well as for. And uh, let's see what is in Spanish. Uh, Spanish uh, is few words. Oh, uh, how are you? Casejo, they say it. Como estas? Conachi, como estas? And then the reply you give is tikhu uh, or very well or you know it's good. Move in. So, so here you go. <laughs> good. So, sir, in in Germany or in European country, uh, not not the English is the first language. No, everybody has their own language. Just like in our. India, we have our, every state has their own language. So is Europe. Europe is like India. Uh, but keep in mind, just like our, especially I'm talking about North India, all the North Indian languages, they come from Sanskrit. Almost all the European languages, they come from Latin. And uh, Latin and Sanskrit are considered sister languages. So basically, uh, long, long, there is already, there is a lot of research going on uh, in that uh, the forefather of European people and forefather of Iranian and Indian people are the same or not. There is a lot of discussion and debate going on, research going on. Uh, so, so the theory is that uh, one of the, those who support that, yes, uh, they are, their roots are the same. The theory is that Somewhere uh, in the Steppe Mountain, which is like pretty much right now, you can call it, uh, it's part of uh, Turkey uh, or Southern Russia, uh, uh, some Stan countries. In that area, uh, initially, the, our forefather uh, of Indian, Iranian, and European were there. And then they... Uh, once their group became large or whatever region was, we don't know yet, but uh, maybe for some region, they started migrating towards south and then towards west. And then when, uh, when they migrated towards west, they developed uh, over the time with the language which became Latin from the original language. And then when they started moving south uh, wards, uh, they came to Stan countries and Afghanistan, uh, Iran, Afghanistan, uh, in North uh, India. And then they started calling, uh, uh, speaking ancient Iranian and Sanskrit. So uh, basically, uh, you can say that if that theory is good, then our forefather is the same, same people. And there is a lot of research going on. So for that reason, if you look at the languages, the many, many roots are, words are the same uh, in the European language and Indian language. Uh, so do some Indo research on, in, yeah, Indo-European language, do some research on Indo-European language, you will, you will, uh, you will find all the information what I'm telling you about. So that's why it's a, a lot more affinity and it's learning is, easier because our languages are based on phonetics the way we the word is spoken uh, based on that the language is developed but there are some sign languages for example if you look at the japanese and uh, japanese korean and chinese they are sign language nothing to do with speaking 
So you have to learn some few signs. So thanks God, we don't have to learn that. <laughs> really good. It's, it's a lot more better to learn from alphabet, just like we have our uh, uh, alphabet. Just like, you know, like for example, uh, our language in uh, like in Sanskrit, you have uh, you have ek bachan, di bachan, bo bachan. They also have that in German and other languages. Same thing with uh, basically the grammar rules are pretty much very close to each other. If you look at uh, only thing is that uh, for us we have subject and then uh, object and then verb. Uh, I think European language have first subject and then verb, then object. Uh, but pretty much uh, uh, all the, uh, what you call that, karak, uh, bivakt, uh, I don't know what you call it in in English, that one. They are the same, like all the prathma, dutiya, tritya, how we say it. Kartane, karm ko, karan se, I forget that correct thing. We right, right, right. Kartane, karam ko, karan, kartane, kartane, karam karam ko, ko, karam ko, karam se. Se. Mm-hmm. This guy, I also Sam, learn. Sampradhan ke liye. Ke liye. Yes, Sampradhan ko apadhan se. Sampradhan <laughs> ke liye apadhan se. Aur Achha. iske baad kya basta hai? Sashti mein kuch aur bolte hai. Uh, uh, kuch aisa hi tha. That was a very good sentence. Right? I just saw it recently again somewhere in that sentence when I was learning Sanskrit somewhere on the YouTube. So so like that. Similarly, they also have the same thing. So uh, it's uh, it's easy to learn. And uh, especially those of you who are in big cities, uh, there are uh, there are places where you can learn. Especially, suppose in Bombay. Bombay, I know that uh, there are places where they teach German and foreign languages. You can you can find out where they are. So you can go there. But best thing is to start with uh, YouTube and Google because you can do it anywhere. And sir, it's a true sir. Sanskrit language is. Easier than English language, sir. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the, the difference is the biggest, the reason it's easy is that we have, we have rules which is more fixed and the language is that way kind of fixed with those rules. The English have, uh, doesn't have that structure. So, uh, the what what is happening is that even the Shakespeare who was only 400 years back, now if you want to read his his uh, language, it will be just like uh, uh, Brajabhasa and modern Hindi, you call it, <laughs> like Surdas and uh, uh, Surdas language of, and modern Hindi language. Uh, but in the Sanskrit, since uh, Panini uh, did a tremendous job, our our achars were, our rishis were great. So he structured it, whatever the, before that, before Panini, Panini is supposed to be somewhere around the five, six century BC. And uh, he pretty much uh, compiled based on whatever uh, whatever background we had before and the way we are sp- speaking, based on that, he developed a grammar and he kind of codified everything in the grammar. And after that, everybody have been following and then few other scholars like Katyayan and then um, uh, who is uh, Patanjali, they also even further uh, expanded that uh, grammar rules. So basically these three gets credit. And so it's so structured that um, it's uh, language uh, pretty much is uh, fixed. So language in uh, 2,500 years has not changed. The, uh, if, you, if you read the 2,500 old script, which was uh, uh, written after Panini's Byakaran was done, um, they are 
they all are following. So most of the epics we have, uh, everybody is following those grammar rules. So there is no difference. Vedas are different. That's why, you know, uh, because uh, Vedic period is before that period. So that is the difference. The, our grammar is in Sanskrit is so strong that uh, like Hindi will drift because Hindi doesn't have that strong grammar. So it's like, you know, like you building a, when you are building a makan, they say that, hey, makan, kistras, the structure, kasa, strong, kya hua, like all those loha and all those things, right? So, <laughs> so thanks to our Vyakarna chart, Sanskrit is very well structured. And so, gram, uh, you know, it has, it has so much power to absorb everything within those structure that uh, we're, you don't have to go anywhere else to find anything new. Everybody finds the answer uh, and uh, they can compose prose, poetry, whatever they want to do. In, uh, suppose uh, he goes in English, we tell uh, in uh, Sanskrit, Sah yes, yeah. sir. So in English, uh, we, we need to mention first of all subject, then uh, verb. Yeah. But in Sanskrit, it doesn't matter, sir. We can say Gachati, sir, that will also true. Yeah. Doesn't matter subject first and verb first. We need okay. to follow rule means sah gachati, not gachata. So, yeah. so, no. so, so this is the main difference as per my yeah. view, sir. And yes, then sir. and then you know I I have sent to you. I mean there is a lot more interest. I am in the class uh, like two, three times. Uh, I'm taking a reading class, how to read the scriptures. I'm also in the Sanskrit grammar class. And then there is one philosophy class uh, on Advait. So uh, each week I'm trying to do this three hours. And then in, in those three hours, they are all in Sanskrit. And then of course, through the English medium, the where teachers are uh, teaching. And then there are a lot of, a lot of Americans, a lot of uh, people from uh, online from all over the world in those classes. And then people have interest. Uh, almost uh, most of us are all retirees. <laughs> everybody, everybody is trying to get moks in the old days. So maybe that's why everybody is trying to learn that way, how to get moks <laughs> after enjoying their life. <clears throat> but there's a huge interest in Sanskrit everywhere. And uh, uh, Europe also has a lot of interest. And, and in, and basically, uh, uh, it has it is such a powerful language uh, that uh, that uh, like uh, it, it's so scientific. Like yesterday, I learned something something new, very interesting. Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, somehow something happened. I don't know why. I wanted to understand that zodiac uh, Indian zodiac system. Indian Jyotishi or astrology, whatever you call it, Jyotishi system and Western one. So I just uh, clicked on the YouTube and then uh, I found that what is the difference? How the their signs are Western calendar and Eastern calendar. We both have the 12 months of zodiac sign. Uh, all, all 12, uh, not month, I should call it, whatever is that. Um, zodiac sign for uh, uh, both, both culture. Uh, in, in, but uh, the, the point uh, which was very interesting I found is that our mathematicians in India, when they developed the Jyotis mathematics, they centered the system of uh, what you call the calculation. The center of their calculation was the the center of the Milky Way. <laughs> Imagine that. The center of the Milky Way, not even the few grahas, like uh, uh, center of the Milky Way you, is the point from where they are calculating. Uh, and then all the planetary systems was part of their calculation. On the other hand, Western, although they have developed like long, long time later, like a thousand years later, 
their system is mainly around the solar system. I mean, the sun. The, so their zodiac sign is based on that. Earth is moving around the sun and based on that, they calculated it. So um, naturally ours is more accurate because of that, because our, uh, our Jyotishi sign, I mean, center is more accurate place because, you know, uh, even the sun's space, wherever sun is, it is also fluctuating and it is moving. Every, every planetary system is a little bit moving here and there. But if you take the whole composite Milky Way, the center, how much it will change <laughs> in 3,000 years? I mean, you know, imagine. And so, so it's accurate. It has not changed at all. And uh, so there is no error in, 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 in the calculation. Um, it's very interesting. Very small, a small video I saw last night. You guys should watch that one. I'll, I'll post it somewhere sometime when I get a chance to. Uh, so like that, every, every, everything is kind of uh, very scientific. Uh, when, when it comes to uh, like, you know, science are always challenging religion, but uh, when it comes to challenge, nobody, no Christians and Muslims and uh, all these people, they don't understand, but Hindu philosophy comes in their way because the time scale, for example, what Hindu has discovered, that is matching with what they have. Uh, distance between sun, earth, everything is matching. You know, we all, we call it already Bhugol. Yeah, they had a hard time figuring out at the world, I mean, in the Christianity, uh, whole uh, earth was flat. And that is why you know that Galileo was killed. He was executed because he said that the world is, this earth is not flat. So they executed him in Rome or someplace. Same thing in the, uh, in the Muslim religion. Since the Muslim religion, they copied pretty much everything from the Christianity. And uh, so their belief is that world is flat. And uh, this, uh, this earth is flat. On the other hand, we knew from day one that earth is gold. That's why we call even Voo gold, right? That's what we call it, geography. So like that uh, in, uh, um, in, in many, like uh, we consider that uh, our material world is made up of three elements, uh, tamas, uh, rajas, and what is the third one I'm forgetting? Rajas, tamas, what is the third one? You guys remember it? The three gunas. Anybody remember Sanskrit? Gunas from... Tamas, Rajas, and Sat Guna. Rajas, Tamas, and Sat, right? So basically, everything which you see in the whole universe is a mixture of these three, nothing else. Basically, that is what is the, compo the basic composition of uh, everything is these three. If you take the modern electronics, what is in the atom? You have electron, proton, and neutron. That's all is the basic element. And if we all, the material in the modern world, which we call it, it's nothing but permutation and a com combination of those three electron, proton, and neutron. So here you go. You see that uh, 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 pretty much uh, science is coming to conclusion. Uh, if you look at the Big Bang Theory, Western Big Bang Theory says that uh, there was a very dense, uh, infinitely dense particle. It burst and that's how the uh, explosion happened. And then the, that is what is the Big Bang and then the universe started expanding and it's expanding. And that explosion is still going on. It has not stopped. We are in the middle of the explosion. The Big Bang explosion is happening already and we are in the middle uh, and this universe is expansion, uh, expanding um, ever. That is what is happening right now. Uh, well, and uh, if you go to our Vedas, uh, there is a Nasdi Shukt. Uh, anybody remember Nasdi Shukt? I see a lot of you know more Sanskrit. Have you heard of Nasdi Shuktam? Okay. No, sir. I have uh, no idea. Oh, okay. 
So Nasti Suktam is just search on the YouTube. You can find it and uh, it is part of the Vedas. And Nasti Sukta explains that uh, uh, this, uh, this creation of universe, it says that initially this whole thing was dark. There was nothing, nothing, nothing. Everything was uh, dark, nothing. And uh, then from somewhere, uh, a, a particle came and particle got uh, uh, what uh, we call, uh, uh, yeah, tapas. Tapas means tap, heat. A particle uh, came and a particle had mm, desire. Particle has desire and then desire uh, created uh, in it to expand. Uh, and then uh, that, uh, that desire, that uh, tapas, it, uh, it uh, created uh, the uh, expansion of that particle and then particle ex started expanding. Uh, we don't know if there was God before this event or not, or who knows if God was there. It's very interesting poem, you guys. Should, so basically it's telling you that even the concept of God is doubting that, uh, like sometimes we say, that God is there for ever, like no beginning, nothing, or those kind of. But even Veda itself tells in this sloka itself, in this Nasadi that even the God was there or not, hard to tell. And then it gives you at the same time expansion of uh, the theory of Nasadi Sukta, that how the universe, uh, Indian Big Bang, uh, happened. So our Rishi, it's very interesting that our Rishi is how, when we say they were doing the tapasya and meditation, that they would go into deep meditation for a long, long time and they could deduct it. So meditation has such a tremendous power that the things uh, can, I mean, that's how you conceive ideas. I mean, how come somebody, some people get the ideas, like for example, Einstein, or Newton, or anybody you take it, or any modern, uh, basically, you start thinking and then your brain starts calculating your, uh, uh, things, doing your mental exercise, mental mathematics, and then you conclude. And that's what our forefather, Vedic Rishis, they did it. Uh, and then they gave the, the basic fundamental science which they give, the Western, the modern science and the Western people, they find it amazing that how many things they have already discovered in their meditation and which they put it in the book form like Vedas. And uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are just uh, uh, happy to have those things. Of course, uh, physically not in the same way like uh, but they have they have concept uh, for everything. I mean, can you imagine that Biman Sas? They already worked on that one. One Rishi, I don't know who was that Rishi, but he he had even written all the blueprint of the how to make a Biman, uh, uh, like that in every at least uh, at least Kuber and uh, uh, see at least we see one helicopter which was <laughs> which was Kuber had first. Indra, I, oh, yeah, Indra, Indra or Kuber had first and then uh, uh, Lankes got it from him, from his cousin or <laughs> stepbrother, whatever it was. And then finally Rama got it, right? So, so like that, I mean, it's very interesting that uh, they have uh, um, all the aspects. If same thing in the philosophy, then... Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm reading right now, but Advaita philosophy, it's amazing. It's uh, um, unlike, the, unlike the Western thought, it tells you that blindly believe in God. Even our Bhakti Mark says that blindly believe in God. Do it like, uh, you know, we have this Sansar is one and then God is there, the creator, and we should do Bhakti and then, uh, uh, you know, all that. But Advaita tells you that no, uh, there. Uh, there is nothing like that. We all are the one. The we are. Uh, we are. I mean, we we are nothing but a consciousness, uh, chet, chet, chetan. 
And if you look from that perspective, then, then that same Chetan is in you, me, and everybody else. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and that, is, that is the common thing. It's just like uh, uh, they give example that, uh, uh, which example is that one? Uh, let's see here. Which, oh yeah, gut example they give. Like for example, a space, whole space is uh, one, right? Whole space is one. But if you take a gut, now in gut, uh, you have an air in it, right? Or a space in it. Now, uh, what happens? That gut, uh, if you remove the gut, uh, whatever is the space in that gut, that will become one with the space which is anyway everywhere, and that would become one, right? So now the existence of gut is exactly what we are, this human life. So our consciousness, think about the, our consciousness with the limited space. So we are also consciousness and there is a consciousness everywhere, in everything, uh, all, all entities which we see. And that consciousness and this is the same, just like the space in the gut and the space outside the gut is the same. So, uh, only thing is that uh, we have to recognize that. We don't recognize it. That's why it is called, uh, what they call it, avidya, agyan. We don't have the knowledge. And then once we discover that uh, there is a uniqueness, that we all are the same, uh, when that, uh, that level is achieved, that we are not this body, not this mind, we are the consciousness, and that consciousness is the same in everything, uh, uh, once we realize that, that is what is moksha. Uh, moksha is not like begging ball, you go to the God and tell him that I need a beautiful wife or five-story building or Mercedes car, <laughs> like most of us go to temple to do it. So Adyota teach you that, no, that is not, the, that is a very lower level objective to, uh, in the Doit that we worship God and then we try to demand him. We give him goose by Ladu and a uh, few prayers and demand more, like 10 times more a beautiful wife, <laughs> 100 times more property from him in return for that goose. So it's very interesting. And then this philosophy, you know, it's uh, West is also um, surprised that it's such a amazing thinking. And then the thing is that it can be realized. It's not like lofty idea only. By meditation, by constant, they have a procedure of the Arastanga mark. You do, uh, and then you can realize that state. You do negation gradually and then you detach yourself, and then you realize that, oh, yes, you are not this body and mind. People do it, those who have been practicing it. Of course, you and I cannot do it, but it can be. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that the philosophy-wise, this philosophy of Advait, which is also in the Vedas, uh, last part of Veda is called Upanishad, and it is part of the Upanishad, that's why uh, it is also called Vedant. And then in Vedant, you have this, uh, 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 that philosophy, there are people interpreting in a couple of ways. One is Doit and other one is Adoit. These are the two major parts. Doit is that, uh, you know, uh, this sansar, you and me are different from the God. Adoit is, no, we are the same. So these are the two branches of thought in given by Indian philosophy. You can take the Western philosophy, they all are Dwait Badi. Uh, 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 you know, same thing Muslim, they will tell you that we believe in one God, but basically they are believing in God and then they are believing in Sansar. So they are all Dwait Badi. Same is with Christian, same is with all the religion. It is only the Adwait philosophy which is really uh, strangely enough believes like uh, there is no second, there is only one. And uh, and they have a proper proof of that one and how how they go. And that's what is the whole um, philosophy of uh, Sankara Charge. And I'm reading and I'm amazed 
how how wonderfully uh, everything with example is matic up with proofs they say um, uh, one thing i learned i tell you a story very interesting story that what we call it in the western world aha moment the something is not a knowledge until you really discover it experience yourself up, up to that point uh, you don't know so let's see a, a example on that one the uh, that one guru he had 10 students and he told uh, he told them that okay you guys go and swim the river and come back so there was a river on the bank of the river was the ashram and so 10 Ten students, they swim, and then he made one student uh, leader of that ten. So there were nine students, and then he was the leader was the tenth one. So all of all of ten went to swim on the other side. They went and then uh, they went to swim. They came, returned back, and then of course it was a deep river, long one. It took some time for them, but finally they all by the evening they were on this side. so they said that, okay let's start counting among themselves uh, if we, we all got safe so the first the leader leader of the team they were 10 he started counting he said 1 2 3 4 5 8 9 and he had forgot to count himself and he was not conscious and he said oh my gosh we are only 9 we started with 10 but we are only 9 oh my gosh where did we lose one person he asked his another friend hey you count it that second guy he also started counting <laughs> he also did the same thing he counted 1 through 9 and 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 then everybody in the team uh, had uh, one shot only nine people one person he lost so then they started crying in uh, that they have lost a friend uh, out they started with 10 and now they are nine so they started crying and kind of uh, puzzling and uh, you know trying to figure it out what we are going to say to our guru and so uh, the the nearby a fisherman uh, was uh, fishing and he saw them crying so he stopped he stopped by and said uh, what is happening uh, and then they told the whole story that how they have lost a friend and uh, uh they are crying for him that uh, what we are going to tell our guru that we lost a friend we could uh, and then he says uh, okay so then he said how many you were there uh, i said that we were 10 and now we are only 9 so he counted <laughs> he counted he got the exact count of 10 so then he smiled and he told him the story that no you you guys are 10 you guys are excluding yourself that's why you are only 9 and then the knowledge really everybody got this knowledge that oh we are 10 <laughs> so that is what is their own experience they discovered the knowledge so now it become a true knowledge up to this point they were in avidya ignorance but suddenly they got the knowledge so so this this is what uh, uh, what uh, Uh, is uh, Vedanta teaching te- teaching art that basically we are all uh, one. Brahma is only one. Then what we see is this is Maya, and then uh, there is uh, what is the third thing? Yeah, uh, Atma is the individual soul. Three and fourth is Abhidya, ignorance. Abhidya is that uh, that uh, the not. proper knowledge like these nine guys had no proper knowledge of reality that they were actually 10 uh, similarly when in the dream we are we sometimes we see a snake or something and then we become scared but then suddenly uh, when we wake up we find that uh, there is no snake so as soon as we have our fear is gone so uh, that avidya is uh, the ignorance and then by the by proper knowledge gaining proper knowledge you cancel that avidya that ignorance or agyan and then once you have that knowledge once you gain that knowledge then you become again cheerful happy so it's wonderful there is nothing like uh, blindly follow it and they say that there are three things uh, one is the basic scripture knowledge number one 
and then your own intelligence, your own mind, your mental uh, calculation or what you call, uh, you know, your buddhi. So you have to uh, judge based on your own buddhi. And so, uh, and then you have to experience it. Then only is something is, you should consider it a true knowledge and then you accept it. And then example is like simple that the scriptures tell you two plus two is equal to four. Let's see is here. Now you have to, in your brain, you have to understand, you have to digest that yes, two plus two should be four. And you see that happening. For example, you have two group of uh, people in two pieces and you see them together and they become four. So then once you have realized, you have experienced that, then it is a knowledge. So, so Western people, the point I'm trying to make is that when they look at our Adwait philosophy of Vedant, they, they, they become, they bow, they bow to our Acharya that, well, look at it, that thinking, nobody else could think that kind of thought. And then their Western philosophy looks like a little tiny baby in front of Indian philosophy. So okay. I guess thanks. now. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Yeah. And actually, yeah, right no. now, 8 to 10 a.m., sir. Sorry, yes, sir. Yes, you guys go. That's what I'm thinking. That yes. when you start talking. We are, all we are like some working people. Yeah, go for a work. All right, yes. talk to you guys later on. Thanks, Tuesday. sir. See. And nowadays, Bye. nowadays, sir, we live every day, 5.30 to 7. So please, sir, as you wish, sir. Mm. You can join yeah, any day, if, anytime. I, I cannot commit it. Whenever I'm free, I'll I'll, I'll yes, just sir. drop it. Yes. Just like I Thank did it today. Thank okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.